All right, so this is gonna be a video showing uh, how to fix your MacBook Pro if the keyboard and trackpad aren't working. So first thing, um, this is for the 13 inch and the 15 inch MacBook Pros, model A1398 and A1502. So the 15 inch model is A1398, 13 inch model is A1502. This is for the 2012 through 2015 models. So 2012, 13, 14, and 15 models. All right, so first thing you wanna do to confirm that it's what I'm thinking it is, which is usually the trackpad. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is plug in the charger. If your battery is already 100%, you wanna drain it a bit to do this so that you can see when this charger light is um, amber or orange or whatever you wanna call it, I call it orange. Okay, so what we're gonna do, okay, so hopefully you can see, I don't know if it's visible, right now this light is orange. So what you're gonna do to confirm that it's not a bad keyboard and most likely a bad trackpad or possibly the cable, you're first gonna go to Control Option Shift on the left side, hold those keys down, and then press the power button. If the keyboard's okay, you'll see this light go to green and then back to orange. So I don't know if you saw that. I'm gonna zoom in here and then I'm gonna hold these or let me show you close up. All right, so here you can see the light is orange. I'm gonna press those keys, press the power button, and here you can see it goes to green and then back to orange. So that's how I know the keyboard is okay, as, as I mean, at least these keys, at least the power button and these keys. So that's how you know it's um, at least not a power button issue. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, usually if your computer turns on, then it's not a keyboard issue. And then it's because your keyboard is at least detecting the power button. But when you do this SMC reset, at least you'll know like all the keys here and this key are working well. All right, and then this model, because it uses a, um, a taptic feedback motor, if there's no power running to the trackpad, you'll know because it doesn't click. So that's one way you'll know that the trackpad is part of the issue. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up the bottom cover. So you're gonna use a Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. And then we'll also need a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver later. But first let's remove all the Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver uh, screws from here. You wanna keep them in order because they are different size shape and lengths. I put them flat side down like this. In the pattern I remove them, so this rectangular pattern, I'll put them in my desk, on my desk like that so that I can remember where each screw goes. Um, these two screws are shorter than the rest, but it's always a good idea to put the same screws back where you got them, even if they do look and seem exactly the same. All right, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, this is a customer's computer, so if you need to see other things from these um, laptops, uh, I won't have the computer at the time. Um, but I do have a lot of videos on these models, so if you search for the model number there and then um, just my YouTube name, it's been repaired, you should be able to find other videos for whatever you're looking for, like keyboard repair, battery repair, screen replacement repair, things like that. Alright, so anyways, <clears throat> we'll get all these screws out. Now we're going to pop this bottom cover off, so just go from the back here and then you kind of just pull it up just like that. All right, it does have clips in here, so it unclips. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. All right, so depending which model you have, the design will be different, but the trackpad has a cable here. Um, some models that don't have the taptic feedback motor, the cable will actually be underneath the battery and will connect under uh, somewhere over here. But anyways, we're gonna switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver and remove the two screws holding this piece in place. If you want to be extra safe, um, let me actually show you here. So if you want to be extra safe, you can actually remove the battery first. I'm just going to do this. But anyways, you can disconnect the battery first. So let me show you how to do that. So let's zoom in. So the battery connector is right here. Depending on the model, it will be in a different spot, but it looks the same. Get underneath here and then you pull this connector up just like that. Okay. After you do that, you actually want to press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. So just hold it for about 15 seconds. This will make it a lot safer to work on and less risk of damage, okay? So about four more seconds, three more seconds, okay? 
All right, there we go. Okay, so next thing you're gonna wanna do is check the connection on both sides here of the trackpad. So let's zoom out. Okay, so this specific model, the trackpad has this press down connector right here. Okay, so we're gonna pull this up. I just use my fingernails at two corners like this. And then I pull the connector up just like this. And then you wanna pull this um, cable that way while you peel it up. You don't wanna just roll it backwards because you don't wanna crease this cable. All right, so we're gonna peel this up just like this, okay? You wanna kind of keep your finger down here to prevent it from like flying out when you get to the end of the adhesive. All right, next we're gonna flip this little latch up here. All right, just flip that latch up. And then you're gonna kind of pull up slightly while you pull back to pull this connector out. There is some adhesive here that makes it a little bit difficult to remove, but um, yeah. All right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is just confirm that this thing is connected properly. So we're gonna reconnect everything and put it back together. And if that doesn't work, then you're gonna have to try replacing this cable. If that doesn't work, then you're gonna have to replace the trackpad. But if you need to replace the trackpad on this model, you are going to have to get the battery out. I'm not gonna show that in this video. If you wanted to see that, um, I have several other videos showing how to remove the battery. Um, it is a pretty difficult, risky job. So if you wanted to, uh, if you had to do that, um, you might wanna consult a repair shop. All right, or just watch my video and then see if it looks like something you'd be able to do. All right, so let's go ahead and reconnect this cable here. So we're just gonna reconnect this. And then we're gonna slide our finger over that latch to flip it back down. All right, and then what I like to do is I like to keep the center adhesive from sticking down while I plug this in. Okay, so I keep my fingers under here and then I'm gonna plug this into the motherboard. Once we got both ends of this connected, then we can go from the center and kind of just push it down. That way it's not pulling all in one direction on any side. Okay, after that, we're just gonna put this metal plate back on top and put back the T5 or Torx 5 screws. Okay. Just like that and last screw, just like that. All right, once you got all of that in, we're going to plug this thing back down, all right? And then we're just gonna put the bottom cover back on. Let's zoom out again. Okay, um, in a lot of cases, it ends up that this battery, if the battery's bad and it's like inflated, it can yank on this cable. And if that's the case, you'll want to replace your battery and then just re reseat the connections for the trackpad. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this back on. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and put back the bottom screws um, because I actually tested this one and it looks like that solved the issue. So anyways, let's go ahead and put back the P5 or Pentalobe 1.2 screws. Okay, get all those screws back in. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Usually after doing hardware changes like that, um, I like to do PRAM and SMC reset. Did I push the battery connector back in? I'm pretty sure I did, but let me confirm just to be safe. Yeah, okay. Okay, if you want, you can actually test the computer as is right now without putting all these bottom screws back in. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to test it, I recommend putting at least uh, two screws, one in each, like one in the corner, one in the opposite corners, just so the cover doesn't accidentally fall off and then um, you accidentally can short out the computer. So. Just to be safe, um, it's always good to put at least a couple screws onto this, even though it has the clips that help hold it in place. Okay, so before the trackpad wasn't clicking, it would pop up the message saying like no Bluetooth keyboard detected or anything like that. Um, so yeah, but anyways, now we're just gonna put back all these screws and then we'll power it up and I'll show you that everything is working okay. Again, it's always a good idea to do the SMC and PRAM reset after doing any hardware changes on MacBooks, if you can, just so that it can reset what the memory of the Mac was recognizing. So it will reset those settings. It doesn't delete any of your data, so don't worry about that. Um, it's very safe and it's very easy to do, so just, yeah, just do it. it. Takes a few seconds. All right, we'll flip this back over. Open this back up. Let's go ahead and do the SMC reset again by plugging this in. Again, you'll see the orange light. 
and then control option shift power button should go to green that's how you know you did the smc reset right now we're going to do the pram reset power it on and then hold command option p and r all right in on some models you can actually see the screen comes on and then it'll shut back off i just saw the screen go on it was um black but it was lit up and then it shut itself off that's how you know you did the pram reset if you want you can keep holding it after the chime and then usually you can see it shut itself off again and then if you um, keep waiting it'll chime again or you can just let go until you hear the second chime there you go and that's how you know you did the pram reset so now we're going to check i feel the trackpads clicking that's a good sign before it wasn't clicking so i think we should be good to go all right so let's let it finish booting up and then I'm just going to move the mouse around and click shut down before the keyboard wouldn't type either. I already checked that earlier and it looked like it was good. Um, and of course these keys work. So unless random keys are not working, if that's the case, then you most likely have liquid damage or your keyboard um, connection is bad. Then you'll probably have to end up replacing your keyboard. But um, other than that, this should have solved the issue you had assuming it was a trackpad cable or trackpad issue. Again, if the cable didn't work, you might have to replace the trackpad or the trackpad cable or both. So yeah, and if you had liquid damage, then there's a even better chance that you're gonna have to replace some components. Um, but if it just stopped working all of a sudden, it could be from the battery here. You can see the mouse is working. So I'm gonna shut this down and that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, again, please like, subscribe and share my channel with others. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Let's drop this spike.